Hey, what is up guys and welcome back to Too Much Tech. And in today's video, we are gonna be taking a look at the new 2020 edition of the Alienware 25 gaming monitor. In this review, I'm gonna have this monitor facing us for obvious reasons in most monitor reviews. The back of the panel where all the RGB and everything lives isn't really that appreciated, so uh, we're gonna appreciate it today. In today's video, we're gonna be breaking down this monitor, determining if it's worth it or not to you for the price that it costs and the features that it brings. So first thing I wanna talk about real quick is just the design. Obviously, this is gonna be the same design as the Alienware 27 that came out late last year in 2019 with this new Alienware design language, and I think that it looks really good. They've got it in this new stealth black color, is what I'll call it. It's really like a space gray type of black. On camera and in real life, it doesn't look like a pure black. It's really more of like a space gray color, and it looks really cool. I prefer the white color because like the white matches my PC and setup theme a little bit better, but this black color is really cool. If you guys are going with a little bit more of a stealthy color scheme for your setup. You got the same Alien effects RGB with like the spectrum modes, you can set it to a specific color if you want. And you've got the lighting effects in three areas. So right here on this bar that shines on the back of your desk or wall or whatever, you got the little alien head up here. And then on the front, the power button is illuminated also with the RGB color. In terms of connectivity, you got one display port, two HDMI and four USBs, as you always have had on most high-end Alienware monitors. The stand is incredibly adjustable and it is vase amount compatible. I do kind of recommend putting this monitor on a stand and connect it to your desk or to the wall because this stand as cool as it is it does have a ton of tech inside in terms of the lighting and stuff but the base is entirely too big and this is the same problem that I've had with pretty much all Alienware monitor stands is just they're really nice very well built super sturdy but they take up way too much space on your desk it just it interrupts your mouse pad and everything and I have a big desk too and this one still gives me issues. I just wish that they would come up with a way to have a stand that's just as cool as this one, but have it take up less space. The stand, you do have some really nice cable management right here too, so that's good. At least, you know, you got this huge stand but you can manage your cable super easily. So I, I guess that's kind of cool. So let's talk about the panel improvements. The panel obviously is a 1080p, 24 and a half inch IPS display. Does not have HDR, which is one of the things that I'm gonna kind of knock it for because it's really expensive. And you would think that at this price range, a 1080p monitor would also have HDR, but I can almost give it a pass because it's a little bit more so of a competitive monitor. And at least with it being a competitive monitor, it is really freaking good. You get the color accuracy and the viewing angles of having an IPS panel, but now you actually get the real one millisecond response time without having any of those weird ghosting artifacts and all that stuff. It's a lot better. So on screen right now, I'm gonna throw up the uh, the UFO testing and all that good stuff. It is in a lot of other monitor reviews and stuff like that. And maybe if we had a worse panel, we could see a little bit more ghosting or artifacting, but that's the thing. This panel is really freaking good. There is not really that much ghosting at all that even I could detect. The next test I'm gonna throw up on the screen right now is a real life test of just playing Fortnite, uh, shot at 120 FPS, same as the UFO test, slowed it down to 50%, and I don't see any ghosting at all at that extreme preset which is surprising because on the 27 inch, I definitely noticed it. On the old 25 inch, I also definitely noticed it. If you went to the second fastest response time, it was perfectly fine. And honestly, it's, it's not that bad. It's really not that much more noticeable. If anything, they just finally fine tuned the calibration in the monitor or something to have the extreme preset look and feel the best, as opposed to in the past, the super fast or the second fastest response time gave you the best performance while having ghosting. At least now they figured out a way how to do it at their fastest preset, so you really do get that true one millisecond response time. Which is nice because this is like a first for a 240 hertz IPS display, and that's really good. And talking about what I feel in game, now that all the ghosting is gone at the very fastest response time, I'm not gonna lie to you and say that it feels a lot faster than the 2017 because I only have not had a 2017 for maybe a month and a half. So it hasn't not been my main for not that long, but I did notice a difference in the way that the panel looks over the 2017. The 2017 for a TN panel was about as good as a TN panel can get. 
but this being IPS, you just get the natural benefits that you normally get from an IPS panel as opposed to a TM panel. So this one, even though it doesn't have HDR, it does seem a little bit brighter than I remember the TM panel being. And the colors are just more accurate. And I can now look at this monitor, not straight on, even on camera and still get accurate representation of what things are supposed to look like and still have decent color accuracy. Let's just say that you had a really long gaming session that day, you were streaming, blah, 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 you got some clips and now you wanna chill and lay back and edit your clips that you just got from your super long eight hour stream that you did that day. This monitor is good enough where you can lay all the way back, you know, in your gaming chair, sit there like this and edit your video and you'll still get decent color accuracy. So it's really good. Or let's just say on the flip side, you have some friends over and they're watching you play your games. Now they can stand back at an off angle and still look and see the exact same picture that you're looking at with the same color representation and everything. It just makes for a more enjoyable viewing experience as a whole. And I'm really glad they were able to figure out how to make a really fast monitor IPS and look really good and be able to do professional work if you absolutely have to and just have an overall better and more enjoyable viewing experience. Now again, for this price, it is around $500 right now. Do I feel like it's worth $500? Yes. And no, if it had HDR, I would say, okay, sure, $500, I can see it. Without it having HDR, as a lot of other monitors around this price point do, they may not be the same spec and have 240 hertz, understandable. They may be around the 165 hertz or 180 hertz and have HDR, but it would have been nice to have it, especially coming from a big brand like Alienware. Now, for that reason, I feel like this monitor will be a little bit more fairly priced at around $400. That to me would seem more like a deal. All right, so this product is a really simple product, so I'm not gonna overcomplicate it because it doesn't really need to be overcomplicated. Honestly, this is one of the best 240 hertz monitors that you can get because it does have that true one millisecond response time. It's got an IPS screen, so you get all the benefits that come with having an IPS. It does get decently bright. It's not overly bright, but it's good enough. And on top of that, it has some of the best in class performance for a monitor in terms of ghosting and all that good stuff, because it's basically non-existent. Now, is this monitor worth getting over the 2017 Alienware 25? Absolutely, yes. Now, if you know that you play fine on the 2017 and you just want something that looks better, this is a good upgrade. In terms of real life performance, are you really gonna feel it? Maybe, I'm saying you might see maybe a 10 to 15% benefit going to this one, but that's just based on having a little bit better color, so it's probably easier to see some things. Slightly better viewing angles because if you're not looking at it at a straight on axis on the 2017, that one had decent viewing angles, but not as good as this one because it's just a different panel technology. So that might get you a little bit of improvement too. And then that raw one millisecond speed might help just a little bit. But other than that, the 2017 was really fast and really good. Is this one worth getting purely based on the speed versus the 27 inch? Um, I don't know, that's like a whole nother discussion because the 27 inch honestly isn't high enough resolution where 1080p looks good at that resolution. Whereas the 25, 1080p looks good on the 25. It's a really good pixel density to have at 24 and a half inches. Whereas on the 17, it's a little bit more of a stretch. I feel like you should have 1440p and I really want that to be the next thing that Alienware is working on for their next run of monitors. If you prefer having a little bit of a larger screen, then obviously the 27 inch still makes sense. Just make sure you put it on the super fast mode and not the extreme mode. And they do feel pretty similar. Like I said, it's really mostly just a thing of the on-screen display, having the fastest setting in this one and second fastest in that one. If you put it on the fastest on the 27 inch, you will notice the ghosting. So that might be a little bit of a speed improvement for the 25. Overall, do I think this monitor is worth it? Heck yeah, it's really good. It's a solid upgrade to move up from the older version. And if you're just looking for the best 25 inch competitive monitor, that's also really good to look at and that you can use for other things that aren't gaming, this is definitely it. I would highly recommend this monitor to anyone looking for the best 1080p monitor that you can get. But all right, you guys, that is gonna be it for this video. We're getting really close to 10,000 subscribers, so I would really appreciate it if you guys drop the like and subscribe if you guys are new and help us with the YouTube algorithm so that we can grow our channel and get more products to review 
for you guys. If you guys have any other questions about this binder, feel free to join my Discord and ask me questions there. I'd be happy to help you guys out and answer any other questions that I didn't specifically answer in this review. But there's also a very high chance that I probably answered your question in the 27 inch review, as well as maybe the previous 25 inch review. So I will have those linked below if you want to take a look at the older monitor reviews and see if uh, there's anything that relates to this one. Because a lot of the things concerning this monitor are very much either similar or the same to those other monitors. Thanks once again for tuning in. I will see you guys in the next video.